our first guest tonight, um, well, she's going to try and clarify for us a story that's been a little misrepresented across the country for the last several weeks. I want you to listen carefully because there is apparently a new law that has been signed into law by the governor out in California that now allows gay individuals who are no more than 10 years older than a young child to be with that minor sexually and not receive a strict penalty. So that means you could have a 14-year-old having sex with a 24-year-old and then that person not be counted on the sex offender registry. Hmm. That one's a little puzzling. So let's get to it. Somebody that knows a lot about this bill joins me now. California State Senator Melissa Melendez. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. This is a very controversial and convoluted issue. Uh, this bill, I remember hearing about SB 145, I think, Melissa, a while back. First of all, back up for me and tell me who proposed this bill, and then we'll get to the bread and butter and the meat of this thing. Okay, thanks, Dan, first of all, for having me on and bringing sure. light to this issue. Um, Senator Scott Weiner from the San Francisco area is the one who introduced this bill. And he is trying to suggest that it's just bringing parity in the law, which it is not. It is absolutely reducing the sentencing for crimes with minors. Um, I will tell you that I was little shocks me coming out of Sacramento, to be honest. This one did. Um, you, I don't know in what circumstance anyone can say that it is consensual for a 24-year-old adult to have sex with a 14-year-old child. No one has been able to give me any situation, any example of when that would be appropriate. But that's what this bill allows. It allows someone who does that to escape being convicted of a felony, and it allows them to escape being placed on the sex offender registry list. And really, it's a bill about... Um, you know, grooming, if you will. You start grooming a young child, your prey, at the age of 12, by the time they reach the age of 14, then suddenly it becomes consensual in the eyes of um, the people participating. It's just, it's really sick. It, it, it's it sounds pretty disgusting. My daughter's almost 13, and I can't imagine in a year's mm -hmm. time I'd be having a discussion about her and a 24-year-old um, man or woman. Um, look, we don't, we don't judge on this show, so I'm, uh, look... LGBTQ, firm supporter of equality and equal rights for everybody. So let's discuss that. And Melissa, before we went on the show, I know we had a quick phone conversation. And I want to clarify, where does the California law right now stand for straight or um, heterosexual couples versus the gay community? So if you have an age gap, is there a law with an age gap for straight couples? Fill us in. There is currently the law right now allows for discretion for a judge um, in a in a straight encounter to fire or charge at the DA charging as a misdemeanor or a felony. Same respect with the sex offender registry list. If it's not a heterosexual heterosexual encounter, then it is a felony. So what the author is trying to say is, well, it needs to be fair. If if a 24 year old man can have sex with a 14 year old girl and maybe get a misdemeanor, then a, then a gay encounter should have the same results. M what I'm saying is never, never should is it okay? an adult be having Either sex way. with a child. Right. No matter what right. sex you are. It doesn't are. matter. Okay, so That's this, right. I totally get this. So folks, really listen to what she's saying here. So right now the law in the gay community's eyes in California, and I would think the gay community across our country, it is unfair because they are immediately charged with a felony and they immediately go on the registry. On straight couples, the judge can decide whether or not it's a misdemeanor or a felony and then decide if they go on the registry or not. That is unfair. That's not fair. So they want it changed to what straight couples have. Why wouldn't you, if you were concerned about our youth, our children, the future of our country, how about you make it the same all across the board for the strongest penalty so that straight or gay couples are immediately charged with the felony and immediately go on the sex registry? Doesn't that make sense? That's what you're proposing. Exactly. If, because he also said that you know, he wanted to stop criminalizing teenage sex. Which makes it sound like he's talking about the two high school kids who are, you know, year difference in age. One's 18, one is 17. We don't want to make criminals out of them. And I don't disagree with that. But then why do you have a 10-year age gap? Because he's not just talking about 17 and 18-year-olds. He's talking about 24-year-olds and 14-year-olds. Right. That is Tell him where difference. the law starts. So the law what? starts in his bill at 14. 
And at then you have 14, a 10-year gap. That's right. So rather than make a bad law worse, which is what he did, why not strengthen the law to protect all kids, regardless of orientation, protect all kids from predators? Because you cannot tell me a 24-year-old having sex with a 14-year-old is a predator, no matter how you slice it. No matter how they try to say it was consensual, it is not. And no matter what sex, gender, whatever, That's right. which way you go, it doesn't matter. 10-year gap from 14 to 24. I want folks out there to really soak that in. Think about that. Think about when you were 14. I mean, we were all, of course, probably at some 12 or 13. Uh, you're, you're exploring, you're getting sexual. But at 14 to have a 24-year-old, or at 16 or 17, a 26 or 27-year-old then, this makes no sense to me. And if you really, truly cared for the young people in the gay community and cares about all constituents like politicians are supposed to do once elected, not just your base, then you would want a law that would help protect the children from all predators, gay or straight. Makes sense to me. Uh, thanks for clarifying on SB 145. And I understand that uh, your wonderful governor, Mr. Newsom out in California, signed right off on this. This is now a law, correct? He sure did. He signed it rather swiftly, he, although he did sign it on a Friday afternoon. You know, so the media wouldn't cover traditional, it. Right, right. But he no. did sign it and, and without, without any comment. Of course, no comments, sign it. Uh, we know how news cycles work. You bust out big breaking news on a Friday, Friday evening, afternoon. The media barely covers it, and by Monday they're on to a new cycle. That's how the mainstream media works. Uh, I used to do that, so I know exactly what they do. I didn't do it, but that's what they do. Uh, let's talk about something else in your state, this ongoing lockdown from your governor. Uh, you've got like 15,000 people fleeing the state a week, thousands of businesses rushing to states, not just for the tax breaks, of course, but because they can't reopen their businesses, their livelihoods stripped from them. Uh, you closed down back in March 19th, I believe. What's going on? I mean, Republicans have no control up there. You've only got, what, 10, 11 seats in the Senate and a handful of seats in your assembly. How can you get this governor to open things back up? Well, you know, I actually tried that. I'm glad you asked that question because I introduced a bill, SCR 93, which would take away the governor's uh, emergency powers and it would end the state of emergency uh, so we could, you know, allow it for local control. And I brought that bill up every day in session and every day they refused to allow a vote on it. And I gave my Democrat colleagues an opportunity to stand up and say, this isn't partisan, but we need to get people back to work. We need to get people you know, back into their lives again. I gave them the opportunity to stand up for their constituents, for their business owners, for everyone in their district who's pleading, please let us out of our homes. And not one of them would allow a vote on this bill. So we did try to strip him of that power, but unfortunately we could not get bipartisan support. So now... The legislature is out of session until January. That means Governor Newsom has the reins until at least January. So you guys until don't go back to January. session. It is September nope. 16th. So Governor Newsom, in essence, is like the dictator of the fifth largest economy in the world until you guys get back in control in January. Well, and that's wow. only if he ends the state of emergency, which, you know, the state of emergency, he could keep open for for years, and that has happened. Yeah. The only two ways the state of emergency ends is if the governor says it's over or the legislature says it's over. And yeah. so far, the legislature is not willing to do that. California State Senator Melissa Melendez, thank you so much for joining us on Real America. Uh, we're running out of time, but I want to thank you for your service, not only to your state, but to this nation. I know you and your husband are both Navy veterans, correct? Go Navy. All Go right. Navy. Go Air great. Force. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. All thank right, you. coming up on Real America, she was once a member of the all-girl pop group, the Pussycat Dolls, but now she's a devout Grammy award-winning Christian singer and a huge Donald Trump supporter. We'll chat with Kaya Jones about the exploitation of young girls in the entertainment industry and why Trump is her choice to lead our country for the next four years. Don't go away.